Hey, welcome to another episode. I'm Cliff, and today I'm going to working on this acetylene tank. It's been sitting in my backyard for about five years. Ain't no good no more. Wanted to see if I could uh, eventually make a piece of art out of this thing, but I thought I would do the first step and liberate it. They're heavy, but they're not hollow. They're filled with a porous material to stabilize the gas. Kind of like a really hard sponge. So, real quick about the porous material inside. Before 1984, all acetylene cylinders had asbestos in it. But then after that, they started putting other things in it besides asbestos, which could be crushed brick, fire brick, balsa wood silica lime slurry or some sort of calcium variant. Um, after 1990, asbestos-free cylinders became the normal, but that doesn't mean that they're all gone. There's still some out there. So the porous material in tanks now, it could be anything. So it, it can be asbestos, silica lime slurry, balsa wood, fire brick, crushed brick, calcium variants. It really all depends on how old your tank, where your tank is made. A lot of the asbestos porous material tanks were made in China. I know Australia is really, they got a lot of restrictions on asbestos. I just wanted to cover that topic real quick. But before I do anything to it, I want to make sure it's safe to cut into. I'm going to do cold cutting on it. No heat, no sparks. Maybe a little bit of drilling just to make sure that this thing is completely empty. Like no more uh, flammable fluid inside. Definitely has a nice shape to it, but I'm kind of thinking it's almost not worth it. But let's give it a shot. So it has been open the whole time. It's been stored, so it shouldn't be under any pressure. I don't want to take no chances. Take anything apart. Probably get myself into a big old nightmare. So to cut through the cylinder, I'm going to be using my quarter band. It's a... Uh, Harbor Freight brand works just as fine as any other brand. Um, it has a variable speed on it, so I can go nice and slow. Don't cause any spark. Uh, doesn't send flying debris everywhere. I'm also going to be using a sawzall to cut through the porous material just to get it out of the way. I didn't want to use a sawzall on the tank because it, it causes a lot of heat, and sometimes you can get sparks from using a sawzall material inside of the tank contains acetone and then acetylene is added to the acetone that is in the porous material. Porous material and the acetone stabilize the acetylene. So this tank is actually two halves and the weld joint before it's welded here doing a close-up on the wall say so this is the wall of the acetylene tank and here's the weld joint. How these two two halves fit together is one lip is underneath and one lip is over and then there's a weld put on the outside so there is that much sticking on the inside of the tank so i don't know if i'm going to be able to push down on the top and it'll go at the bottom because i think it's going to hit right here so i'm going to go ahead and test putting this in my press put some downward pressure on it the bottom of the tank that I'm going to have against the press press bottom surface, the core on the inside is actually recessed just a little bit from the wall of the tank. So what's going to be sitting on the press table is the tank itself. This is just going to be a little bit recessed. So when I put downward pressure, this is going to be able to move just a little bit, if anything. I just want to check to make sure this core is going to push past that weld that's recessed inside. If there's no movement, then I got to try something else. I'm hoping this thing just pushes out. There's no telling how big that lip on that joint is right there. Because it's not just butted together and then welded. No, this thing, one lip goes under and the other one fits up to it. And then you, there's a weld on it. So your weld's right here. And you still have that metal sticking out inside. So it's like a speed bump. All of that core is going to, all of this right here is going to need to move past that lip. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot, put some downward pressure and see if, even if I get like a 16th or an eighth or any kind of like indent or depression. So that's, that's my first try. Second try, 
I'm going to go ahead and drill holes. Say this is the top. I'm going to drill holes all the way around to weaken the sides just to get that core out. And yes, I'm going to have to drill all the way down to at least there. I might go all the way. All the way down. So pressing out the core with the shot press was a failure. Uh, it's really stuck onto the sides. So what I'm going to do is take my 12 inch drill extension. And then I found this. And I put those together and hopefully that will help me weaken the sides of the core that's stuck. So let's see if this has any impact. I drilled all the holes from the other side. Hopefully it'll drop down or break loose or something. Otherwise I'm gonna have to get really brutal with this. Let's just hope that it snaps loose. Although I do kind of want to get a little brutal with this, but that'll work. So pretty much gotten everything past the halfway point. And the weld is actually pretty tall on the inside. On the outside, it's a little recessed, if not flat. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put it over a trash bag, then drill through this side, and hopefully everything just falls out. I could beat on it with a hammer or try to force it through, but I don't wanna do it like that. I'm just gonna drill a bunch of holes, see if it'll just fall out. There it is, finally empty. Got the core out. So when I was pressing it through the first time, it was hitting on this seam right here. I see it's two parts right here. This one is recessed in and then met up to that one, and then it's welded. So you got this big old lip on the inside. So here's the remainder of the core. About 30 pounds, 40 pounds, somewhere around there. This is a 3 16 wall, pretty decent sized steel. So now that I have taken apart an acetylene tank, uh, there's a few things that I would actually do differently now, being as they're the weld in the middle of the tank. The weld is actually like into the tank quite a bit. So what I did is I cut off the top and the bottom and the core was stuck on those points. So it didn't really want to move much. That was the main point stopping it from being pushed out. So instead of cutting off the top and the bottom like I did, I would not do that. I would actually make a cut on one side of the weld and then make a cut on the other side of the weld. Cut it in half to where the weld wasn't there anymore and there would be nothing stopping the core from coming out. But of course I would go ahead and take 
the screws on the bottom off, let any kind of fluid or gas seep out. There's screws on the top and the regulator, take that off. So I would start by taking those off and then cut the weld out. But then after that, that wouldn't be there anymore. I would try to cut a bigger access hole, maybe on the side or hole top right here and bottom and push from here. So the bottom would come out this way. This whole area is a core. I would try it out this way next. If I had to do it again. If worse comes to worse, you could always weaken it with the spade bit like I did. You have to be careful with doing acetylene tanks because they are explosive. Sometimes these tanks, the core is made from asbestos. Very dangerous stuff. If you know that it's asbestos inside of the tank, I wouldn't even cut it open. Give it to someone that recycles tanks. Uh, get it to the welding supply store. They'll know what to do with it. It's just not worth it. If you just want a tank, look for a propane tank or a CO2 tank. Um, those tanks have nothing in them. You can just empty all the gas out. And even still, if it's an inert gas, you're, it's not gonna explode. But if you're working with propane, you gotta still take precautions. It's not as dangerous as the acetylene tank I took apart, but it also doesn't have anything in it. The only tank that has anything in it are acetylene tanks. Everything else doesn't have anything in it. So if I missed anything, or if you have a question on anything I touched on on this video, uh, let me know down in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video and want to see future videos. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.